Three, two, negative one. Everyone's rolling. Three, two. Are you going to intro or am I going to intro? I'll do it. You're going to go ahead. But what if I want to? You're going to talk way more than me throughout, so I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then go. Do your thing. So, hey guys, welcome back. I'm still hanging out here with Albion for leather. We're having a good time right now. Yeah, I'm having a great time. And we were talking about islands, and I'll ask me what my favorite island is. What's was. your favorite island? My favorite island is Cobra Island. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, we are at Cobra Island. So, what that means is we have the Cobra sewing machines. Al is in front of a Cobra class 20. Nope, this is 18. 18. That's the 20. And there's the 20. So, we're at 18 and 20. We'll tell you about some other ones. But why don't we start off with the 18 since you're right there and tell us some of the special features? Okay, well, for me, I'm, I'm a tailor. And the class 18 is a very nice garment making machine. It runs typically thread between 69 and up to like 207 so it's like right there in the mid range of of sewing so you can sew together a lightweight lambskin dress if you will or up to you know a pretty heavy duty biker jacket much heavier than that you would want to move up to threads like the small threads being 207 or 277 and then you would move over to the class 20 over there it's just a slightly more robust system the class 18 is a very smooth operating machine but look at this piece of leather in here it's about a half inch thick and i saw you sew through that earlier you gave a quick little demonstration well the thing that that's really cool about the leather machine company is, is they're really innovative in their application of resources, technologies, and stuff like that um, for sewing and the specific applications for the leather maker. And you did tell me a couple other things you mentioned in EPS. Can you tell me more about that? Okay, well, um, the leather machine company and all of their innovative moves, the electronic needle positioning system, or EPS, has been available apparently since about the 60s, but um, They've typically been really expensive devices. They're, they're um, motion control systems that go on little computerized motors and stuff like that that allow um, positioning of instrumentation. Well, in this case, the instrument would be the needle and the hook. Okay, um, So a properly calibrated EPS is going to stop at the just past bottom dead center moment, which is the point where you're allowed to pivot, otherwise you would skip a stitch, or the opposite side, just past top dead center, where the moment you can pull the material away from the needle. Um, it's a really cool labor-saving device, and what it does is by one tap of the pedal, it'll cycle one full cycle without having to do any hand wheel action like you would have back in the day. Oh, wow. Okay, so this hand cycle takes about three pulls of the hand wheel by hand, but with one tap of the pedal, it does one full cycle, and now the needle has perfectly positioned so that it won't skip stitches if you move the goods. And That's I mean, great. This is total sewing geek stuff, right? So well, hopefully some sewing geeks are watching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so then the opposite side of the cycle would be to um, stop the needle at the top dead center so that you can pull the goods out, and then by tapping the other side of the pedal, it's going to stop with the needle just top dead center, right here. Every single time. So now you can easily remove the workpiece without it being tangled up inside the bobbing part. Okay. So, the Leather Machine Company is always like super innovative based off of designing parts that are leather specific, right? Okay. So, definitely, and this is really thick. I mean, in comparison to just normal clothing, and also you have it doubled up, so it's you know, two full pieces of leather going through. Well, it, it'll sew right through this stuff all day and do it when it's running really slow. The old school saw machines used to have these motors that are clutch motors and you'd have to feather them to go through anything to make one stitch at a time where the EPS makes it simple. You'd have to really develop a feel for operating those motors 
where the EPS, I mean, anybody can just walk in and tap the pedal and it's going to do one needle stroke. It's unbelievable how cool and how easy that is. Definitely. But I did uh, a couple earlier. Yeah, another really cool feature that they've done is they've included this speed reducing pulley system. And it takes the fast driving motor and slows it down, but increases the torque availability at the point of the needle. So you might think to yourself, what's that all mean? So the needle can sew really slow and still have enough p power behind it to pierce the leather when it's going slow. Watch like this. It's hard to get it started when, when you're going really slow. Come on. See that? that? Sewing that slow and through such a thick piece back in the day would have been unheard of. So any sewing geek who sees that's going to go, wow, that's really cool. But um, again, leave it up to the Leather Machine Company and their innovative style based off of the work that Steve Cobra Steve has been doing, um, this machine has come a long way. Um, another really cool feature that they've done is they've adapted these swing down edge guides by, you know, I, I had a small part of it by um, designing these little brackets that adapt them because all these sewing machines, they have different um, fixture points, but not the generic flip down guide would just line right up so you have to make an adapter to make it fit. So I had a small part in developing that bracket for the 18, the 20, uh, the 26 I think bolts up without a bracket and the class 4 needed its own bracket so we had a little bit of um, influence there but um, you know, it was really cool. Now I'm going to talk about what I personally did to this swing down edge guide, which is not available through the normal stream. So if you go and do this to your edge guide, the leather machine company probably won't back up your warranty on it. Okay, so every machine that I have that has an edge guide gets a magnet on top and a little wrench that lives on it. Okay, so this wrench is the lockdown, so it doesn't allow it to move around anymore. So once, once you position the, the edge guide, lock the little set screw, and set it aside. Okay. I've contemplated putting a thumb screw there, but I don't want the bulk of the thumb screw catching thread and, and, and stuff, so I, I don't mind the, the smaller part and the wrench with the magnet. So the older system used to have this thumb screw way out here for adjusting the left right. But I cut it off, polished the end, and it's no big deal to do this, to, to adjust it. Okay, So I cleared up about three inches of throat space by cutting that off. I think that's, that's going to be part of the future. We talked about putting that feature on the next ones. Okay? And then this knob here, which is going to adjust the height of the, the guide. But again, the stock one, it's way back there. My big, fat, clumsy fingers can't reach very easily. So I was using a screwdriver to turn that, and that just ends up being hard to do. So I ended up getting a really long screw, which is still too short. It needs to be a little bit, another inch longer so you can access it really easy. But it's like stuff like that, and then they take my advice and apply it or don't. You know, it's, it's up to them what they want to do. But. It's so much easier. You showed me the comparison between the 18 and the 20, and I think the 4 over there, and the differences, and just to be able to reach in there and turn it without, you know. Yeah, without having to, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot easier, so great job with that. It's not a big deal on the class 4, because there's a lot of room in there, but like in a tight space, this longer um, knob helps a lot. Definitely. So yeah, um, you referred to Cobra Island. Mm -hmm. So see this set of equipment? If they're nested together, so there's maybe one or two power supplies going to the to go into the wall, but they're nested together. They're typically known as an island. And um, for a while, it was all Cobra machines, but right now, there's four of the five machines have Cobra tables. I've been upgrading all of my gear over the past couple of years. So in this configuration, we have a class 18 and a class 20. And then there's a Juki with a needle positioner on it. And so all of my machines are getting EPS systems on it. Um, this is an old console machine, but it's got a new table, so it's really cool. But over there, 
There's a class 26 and a 29 over there and a 5110. And way over there, there's a class 4 and a, a 14 splitter. And back over here behind me is a strap cutter. And way over there, there's a bell stagger, a burnisher, and the clicker. But, uh, That's great though, and you're upgrading and changing over to only Cobras. I guess at some point, I'm sure it's a long, tedious, time-consuming Well, it's, it's really expensive. <laughs> and you know? expensive. Um, but, like my experiences back in the day, um, we talked talk about the other vendors and stuff. Mm -hmm. They would sell you stuff that wasn't adequate for the needs of a leather maker. Yeah. And so I still live with some of that stuff because, you know, so... Yeah, of course. So I sell one, use the money, acquire the more appropriate gear from the leather machine company, and, and, you know, that's why things are all Cobra all the time. That's great. A leather machine company sounds like an amazing place. I'm glad that you have found them. You have such a, a tight partnership working with them. So let's take a minute and tell me about... A rock and roll journalist with a clothing company. Tell me about that. That's my turn to talk? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. So, Metal Bay Mayhem is the company, as you know, and Al and I have worked together a lot. We've been friends for a long time, and any opportunity we have, such as now, we bring each other in to help support and promote. Primarily what I do is, as you said, rock and roll journalist with a clothing line. I do have on some of the stuff now. I recently started selling these star bracelets. I have these on my website. I have uh, Metal Babe cups. I do about 300 products. About 100 of them are Metal Babe. I do sell other companies. I do sell some Alvin for leather, like I said. Our we guitar have, strap, we have our a belts. guitar strap, we have a belt, we have a fringe purse. The bangle bracelets. The bangle bracelets with Savarsky crystals. So I have an Alvin section on the website. I sell some other companies as well. I saw online, you know, we set up booths, Al and I, you know, we set up at the Cat House Live the last couple years. We've set up a few, several times together. Tell us about your journalism. The journalism is fun for me. I like to write. I'm a music fan first and foremost. I've always been a music fan since as long as I can remember. I love live music, love concerts, and I started writing professionally in 2008. I think it started initially with Rock City News. I had a column there. Ruben Blue. Yes, I had my own column. They were print, which was great. And then about two years later, I got picked up by All Access Magazine and wrote for them until both of them, unfortunately, are gone. But however, I have my own blog on Metal Bay Mayhem, which has been there for about 10 years. It's not going anywhere. So everything I write does go there. I currently write also for Sin City Presents in Vegas and for a magazine in the Netherlands called Metal on Loud. So every month you'll see articles from me going out in all three of those magazines in LA, Vegas, and the Netherlands. I've done lots of interviews. I've interviewed some of my favorite musicians in the world. I interview lots and lots of local unsigned artists to help give them a shout out and promote them. Well, awesome. So we make a good team. Mm -hmm. We do, and I like to promote all. I've interviewed you, I've promoted you, and I like to you know, help them promote my friends who I believe in. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for helping me with this. Well, you're welcome. I'm happy to be Don't here. give me that. Give me well, five. Well, we high five <laughs> How many times have we high five you? It's uh -huh. like four. More than once, anyway. But it's been fun, and Leather Machine Company rocks. I mean, everything I've heard, I need to meet Dave and Steve in person at some point, but I'm happy to be doing this video here with you and with the Leather Machine Company. Say this with me. Okay. Okay, repeat after me. Pay it forward, right? We only ask one thing, and that is that you pay, pay it, it forward. forward. It is a movie that stars Bon Jovi, by the way. It's a great movie. Same concept. I'll pay it forward? Of. You don't know about I this movie? I don't know. Exactly, what, exactly what you're thinking, except Bon Jovi's in it. Great movie. Go Big Bad Check Jones. it out, but, you know, pay it forward. I'm going to cut. How'd you do, Grant? <laughs> uh, the guy said no one drinks that shit and punched me in the face. <laughs> So did you get oh, it? No, uh, CVS, I forgot that's the one CVS that doesn't carry alcohol. Oh. Oh, no, it's like past Hollywood 